What's going on, everyone? So I wanted to apologize for getting this review out late. I know at this point in time, the boys said came out and finished airing a couple weeks ago. Um, I've just had a lot going on at the same time. I wanted to think about this show a little bit more than normally. And I just also, it's been a little bit difficult in terms of me mustering up, uh, you know, reviewing stuff. So I don't know. But anyways, guys, I am still excited to give you guys this review. This is for season one and two of The Boys. Um, the premise, for those of you that don't know, it's about a group of vigilantes who are sought after with taking down these corrupt superheroes that everyone seems to look up to. Despite, you know, their appearance of being good, they're actually quite evil and nefarious. So, my history with the boys, a little bit of background. I did not watch season one when it aired. I actually watched season one a week before season two aired. The reasoning was, I looked at season one and I thought it was going to be like a comedy TV show about superheroes. And at that point in time also, I had nothing against superheroes. Um, I actually quite like them. But I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Amazon Prime, you know, for the most part, they're very hit. But I was like, eh, I don't know. Um, but it just goes to show you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. In this case, a TV show by its, you know, its look. Because The Boys is a, it's a solid TV show. Um, you know, I think... I think part of me was kind of like, you know what, you probably should give this a chance. At the same time, it would be cool to binge watch season one a week before season two. Season two, I binge watched the first couple episodes when it dropped, and then I watched it week to week as it was airing. And overall, I got to say, I, I did enjoy this show. I think it's rock solid entertainment. Um, I think that the performances overall are all across the board really good. Um, the two standouts, everyone loves Carl Urban as Billy the Butcher, and I think that he is good. But I think the standout for me is Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander. He's amazing. He is someone that you're always on the edge. When you see him on screen, you're like, what is this guy going to do? And there's one instance in particular where I thought, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe he did that. And it turned out it actually didn't happen. But it's something where it was like, that was a really good dream sequence. Because it was like, I thought that he would have done that. Because he is someone that is just off his rocker a lot of times. Very intriguing character, um, and definitely someone that I like that they're fleshing it out as, you know, they're going along with his character. I also like the aggressive color grading. This is a TV show that you can definitely tell a lot of post-production work in terms of cinematography has been done, and I really like that. I really think that this is a show that the color grading and color palette really combine make for an interesting viewing experience in terms of shot composition. Other thing I wanted to say is production design. Um, I think the production values here are really top notch. This is a very expensive looking TV show. Um, you know, technical aspects for the most part are all really good. There's one technical aspect where it left a lot to be desired, and I'll get into that later on, but the action scenes are pretty entertaining. Um, and again, I do think that the dialogue for the most part is pretty solid. However, I do have some issues with this show. Um, you know, I mentioned the acting and, you know, the characters. I like that some of the characters are really good. But I also think that this is a show that, I mean, I'm not going to lie, Jack Quaid, I like him. I was excited to see him in the show because, you know, I remember seeing him eight years ago in Hunger Games and being like, you know, Dennis Quaid, his his son, like, I think he's talented. Even though he's in that movie a little bit, I was like, I think he's, I think he's got it. So, I like his performance in this show, but his character, Huey, I just think is so vanilla, so bland, and that also comes to play with Stargirl. I mean, is it Star... No, not Stargirl. That's DC. Starlight, um, played by Aaron uh, Mor Moriarty. Is it Aaron? Yep, Aaron Moriarty. So, these two, they're, they're, they have some chemistry, I suppose, but... I just feel like this was definitely like a cookie cutter relationship. This is something we've seen so many times before with this whole relationship. And I didn't really like the cliches that came about their relationship where it was like, ooh, she like she doesn't know something about him and will it get revealed or not? It's like, come on, bro. We know what's going to happen here. Um, and then season two, I thought that was kind of amplified even more. But there's just certain things that happened with these two. And I was like, eh, really? Come on. Um, I also thought the score is pretty, pretty bland, surprisingly. Um, and season one, I thought was just kind of okay. Like I gave it overall like a solid rating, but I think what overall makes the first two seasons solid is that first season because yeah, I was entertained by it, but I wasn't really like immersed in it. It wasn't until season two, second half in particular of season two, where I was actually immersed. And I can say that, yes, I am excited with caveat. I am excited with season three. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but I'm definitely now seeing why people like the show. But season one, I don't know. The way that season one ended, I wasn't really excited for a next season. And 
I guess that's kind of true with season two. Because season two finale I thought was amazing. I truly thought that it was great. But I don't want to see a season three because I felt like season two wrapped up so perfectly. And I thought that the way it revealed that one twist was really, really effective. Um, am I going to watch season three? Absolutely. But I feel like it's almost like a Westworld situation, uh, which is a show that I really liked. Where, you know, Westworld season two, you know, I know Westworld season two was very divisive, but... My goodness, I loved season two, and I especially loved the ending of season two. I thought it was perfect, and did it right there. And then lo and behold, we got a season three, which was solid, I suppose. But I'm just hoping that that's not going to be the case with the boys, because I just, I kind of wonder where they're going to go with this. Where do you go from here? And I, I, I guess that that's where the creators come into play, because apparently from what I've read online is that um, the TV show has already gone past the books, and... I mean, the comics. And it's one of those things where I, I just, I don't know. I, 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 am, I am intrigued. I am very much so intrigued with season three with where they're going to go with this. But again, I have some issues here and there with this show. And I do think that that first season, again, it's a little bit bumpy. But watch it. Keep going with it if you haven't seen it. And, and stay for the ride for season two. Because season two, I definitely think, expands on the universe. And I definitely think has more, um, you know, commentary about this world that is really striking. And a good, pretty good parallel with what's going on now in the world. So overall, The Boys, it took me a little bit getting into it, but I can say that I honestly do like this show, and I will be giving The Boys a 3.5 and a 5-star rating, which feels like a hot sauce rating. It's the good old Texas Speed hot sauce rating. So yeah, it's, it's a rock-solid show. But uh, guys, what did you think about The Boys? Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.